Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on cloud concepts. Today we're going to be discussing cloud classifications, and then we're going to conclude by talking about types of cloud computing. I have a ton of information to impart, not a whole lot of time, so let's go ahead and begin this session. Of course, I'm going to begin with cloud classifications. Cloud computing is where the resources on the network are not actually physical in nature, they are provided to the user virtually. This can lead to a very fluid and dynamic environment, as required resources are normally only provisioned as needed and they are decommissioned once their use is completed. Most often these virtual resources are not owned by the company that uses them, but are provided by a cloud service provider. While cloud computing is highly configurable and changeable, it does have some basic structures that are used in the classification of the type of cloud that is in use. There are four basic cloud classifications. There is the public cloud. This is where systems can interact with services and devices within the public cloud and on public networks, as in the internet, and possibly other public clouds. Amazon's AWS is an example of a public cloud. Then there are private clouds. This is where systems only communicate with services and devices within the specified private cloud. Private clouds are not open for the general public to purchase services. Then there are hybrid clouds. This combines aspects of both the public and private clouds. And finally, there is the community cloud classification. This is where cloud services are used by private individuals, organizations, or groups that have a common interest. And the community is responsible for what occurs within that cloud. Now let's discuss types of cloud computing. Because of the nature of cloud computing, it is very configurable to the needs and desires of the purchasers. Purchasers have many options beyond just the type of cloud service, as in public or private, that they want to provision. They may also determine what type of services they're going to require, from the most basic to the highly complex. So what types of cloud computing are there? Well, there's Software as a Service, or SaaS. The end user purchases the rights to use an application, think piece of software, without the need to configure the virtual servers that will deliver the application. Software as a Service is usually delivered as a web application. It's opened and used from within a web browser. Then there is Platform as a Service, or PaaS. The user is provided with a development platform for the creation of software packages without the need to configure the virtual servers and infrastructure that delivers that development platform. And finally, there's Infrastructure as a Service, or IaaS. The end user is provided with access to virtual servers, which are configurable by the customer, and other virtual network resources. This creates a highly configurable environment in which customers can create the resources and performance that they require. In this situation, the end user supplies the software that is going to be used in the infrastructure as a service network, or they purchase additional SaaS applications. It is not uncommon for the type of cloud computing being used by an organization to be a mix of different types. Some departments may use IaaS, while a development team only utilizes a PaaS. Part of the advantage of cloud computing is only initializing resources as they are needed. In a private cloud situation, it is possible for the organization that is using it to actually own the cloud resources. If they do own the cloud resources, they may have it on their own site or they may pay to have the resources hosted off-site. Cloud computing can be a great method of conserving company resources, but it also has several security considerations. 
when using hosting services, there is always the need to consider confidentiality. When the resources are out of the physical control of the company, it may be difficult to control access to those resources. In some situations, such as when a law requires a company to maintain physical control of the resources, cloud computing may be unacceptable. In addition to the physical control, there is also the problem of reliability and availability. The purchaser is having to rely upon the hosting service's ability to maintain system uptime and availability. Always perform due diligence research to ensure that the cloud provider is both reputable and reliable. As part of the research, it is also important to evaluate whether or not the resource is appropriate to be hosted. In some cases, you may find that it's not appropriate. Now that concludes this session on cloud concepts. I began by talking about cloud classifications, and then I concluded with a discussion on types of cloud computing. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope you watch another one soon.